Hi, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use our Amazon template to scrape data from product pages like you see on screen now. I'm going to take you through setting the template up. I'm going to teach you about custom CSS selectors. They're very useful when scraping Amazon. I'm going to show you how to build this axiom yourself step by step and take you through a bit of basic troubleshooting. I'm Alex Barlow. Let's dive in. Quickly, before I take you through how easy it is to configure this template, um, a bit of context on page. I just want to talk in a little more detail about what this axiom does. So as I've mentioned, it's for scraping data off a web page. It specifically, out of the box, this template is set up to scrape the page title, the star rating, and the ratings given by users. Now, of course, this template can be completely customized so you can select other sets of data and tailor it to your choosing. And I'll show you just how simple that is in a moment. Just before we um, configure the axiom, we need to set up our Google Sheet. So I'm just going to tab into the Google Sheet and in true, true Blue Peter fashion, I've got one ready already. So here we are. I've got my sheet. I've got a tab with links and a tab with where I write the data to. And I always keep a backup of my links because we delete one link. Um, we delete every link that we run. So I keep a, keep a backup there. OK, so before we go through the bot, which I'm just about to do, you will need some links. And we do have templates for scraping links if you need to use one of those. But otherwise, I'm going to guess most, most users already have a whole bunch of that data already. And so you're just going to need some of that in a sheet to experiment and get set up with. OK. So now, now let's tab back here and let's open up Axiom. It's just resting on the sidebar here. And this boom is pretty much how you'll see the template once you've clicked install from the template page. It will pop up in your Axiom. By the way, you have to be on the dashboard of Axiom to install the template. It won't install if you're already editing an Axiom. So this template, you'll notice it needs a little bit of setup because it's highlighted three fields in red. So that means we've just got three bits of or three steps that we need to set up before we can run the axiom. So let's open up the first and see what we have to do. So first things first, that Google Sheet I just talked about, we need to put it into here. Now, if like me, you've recently used the sheet, you can just select it from the list or you can search. And in this very first read step, we want to read we want to read from the links tab because we need to pull in the link to go and visit the page. Now, because it's got a table header, I'm going to start from the second row. So I set my first cell to A2, my last cell to AD2. That allows for the link because that's in column D. You may need to experiment and change that. So if you've you got your link in F, you may, may need to do A to F. So that's up to you to experiment with that. I pretty much got that part set up now. Ignoring all of this, we'll get back to that in a second. We're just going to go down here and we're going to set up our write step. So this writes the data that we've scraped and we want to put that into the data sheet just like that. We've already set this up for you and um, we've got add to existing and that stops the data from being overwritten. So that's good. Our final step to set up is here. And we're going to again include the sheet. And what this step, the delete row, is does exactly what it says, what the name says. It deletes a row from the sheet because what we do here is we read one row, we execute the, the task, we go and scrape the data, we append that, we write it to the sheet, and then we delete the row we've just done. So when we go back, when we jump back to the top to repeat the process, we read a new row of data, and that's the loop complete. Now, the other tiny bit of configuration you can alter is as follows. If you want the bot to go through 20 pages, put in 19. It's minus one because it already have done one loop. If you want it to do 18, etc., you can just change the amount here. When you're doing your test runs, I recommend you just do a couple of loops because you don't want to sit there. You just want to check it works before you leave the bot and go off and do something else whilst the bot does your work for you, which is just an amazing feeling. Okay. So that's all you really need to do to set it up. And that will be that will work out the box and get you the product title. And it will um, also scrape the ratings, etc. And now it will also append the data. So it takes the data we read from the Google Sheet, i.e. the link, etc., combines the data and writes it again to the sheet, just as you see here in the data 
So then you get a nice complete, complete table. Sorry, that's my cat coming to say hello. You get a nice complete table of data. It's a fairly new cat. You can probably see it leaping around. Really, it'll probably knock something off. I hope you won't eat the plant. Anyway, let's not get distracted. I'm just going to open up the Axiom again and where was I because I have been distracted. So that's, yes, taking you through all the setup. So out of the box, that will now run and scrape that data for you. But what if you want some additional data? I'm going to take you through that now, how to select new data and also a bit about the custom selectors because they're really useful when scraping Amazon. Thank you. So if you do want to customize your scraping selections, I'm going to show you how now. It's pretty simple. Um, you just press select on, on step 2.2, the get data step. This is the scraping step. You'll see the selectors that we've made. Now, you can either remove those or you can add additional columns. A quick refresh of the select tool. You can select different types of content from text, HTML, links, etc. And um, you can also set custom selectors for those hard, hard to reach bits of content. content. So. A little bit of context about um, custom selectors. I find them very useful with Amazon because they use different page layouts because the content will vary order. So when you've got products that are missing some content, it can change their order and it can, can confuse selectors. So custom selectors can be used and can be very effective when trying to get a bit of data that doesn't seem to appear to be scraped. So if you're ever running the axiom and you're like well that bit of content isn't there it could be that it's not present on the page that particular page that is scraped so you have to do two things you have to check if it's scraped for some pages and not for others and then you also if you find that it's not appearing on any, any pages you can then look at a custom selector i'll show you how to do that shortly but to add additional columns of data to add to your selector you can literally press add a column and then let's say we want to add the price we just go up to there and we click now it looks like a bit of a funny selector there so let's just press reset and try the price down here there we go so a little bit of fiddling around can usually get what you want so that's how easy it is to just adjust the selectors now if you want to use a custom selector let me show you a few tricks let's like let's just take a look at the code so we use chrome i'm just going to close that and <coughs> let's say we wanted to select that price with the custom selector now we use chrome inspector chrome inspector is free with chrome if you've never used before and it's just a tool that lets you look at the code amongst many other things but this is only really one feature you need to learn so elements then you use it's kind of one to go and select you just click on the bit of content that you want like that and then you'll see the html highlighted here and you can see some different things going on here with the code so you've got the price there once and then you've got this hidden hidden bit of pricing as well which is very interesting so that's why it's, when i was selecting it earlier you could almost see two numbers so Let's say we wanted to use a custom selector here. So what would we look at? You'd probably look for these IDs because they're unique. IDs tend to be very unique. So this will be desktop's core desktop feature. So we can do, do that. So by the way, attributes, or these are called attributes. You can also select with those. We've got a blog article on that if you want to learn more. Now let's open our select data and I use custom selector you can set one a new feature we added recently is you can set custom selector per now you can see that's selected that whole div because that's that whole big area so now now we need to refine that we're going to look at the price I'm going to do a price and that's a class so when something says id you need to use the hashtag in front of it and when it's in a class like that, I can see on screen, so it's class equals speech marks, and, and then you need to add a dot, a full stop in front of it. And there's a space between each ID and class. It's basically like writing an address down for, C, for a HTML element using the CSS. <coughs> so 
actually now you can see that selected it doesn't select anything but with the dot that's selected the price now let's just refine that one further and so then we get this final span get the individual price and then you can press set selector and you can see that's another way of selecting data okay so that's how to use custom selectors it takes a bit of learning but it's pretty simple and they're very useful like I say when um, working with Amazon basically it allows you to look at any piece of content and figure out a unique address of that content for example if we wanted these bullets we could just take feature bullets here which is an ID and a good way of checking if IDs are unique I find are using the finder here so you can see the ID that this class I used earlier wasn't unique so you have to get the, the address unique but let me go back to that featured list whoops go back here copy that ID I'm just going to search for that ID and you can see down here it just says one of one so we know that is unique to that content so that's going to make a really good selector there so we can just use the ID to grab grab the list items there so that's how you can use custom selectors to improve your scraping of Amazon thank you now to wrap this video up let me just take you through how this axiom was set up so you can replicate it yourself and learn even more about browser automation and just a bit of troubleshooting at the end okay so i'm just going to open up axiom again ignore those <coughs> now i'm just going to run from top to bottom talk you through what we did so we added our read step we read from as i've mentioned before we read one row of data at a time and then we have our interact step these steps this is the steps that interacts with the browser and it has a series of dedicated sub steps that do things like go to page get data click on elements etc so we go to page we basically insert the token from the google sheet and that passes the url in so the page can go to the product page that we want will be loaded by the axiom then we've got our scrape step i've just shown you how to set those selectors up we also set the max results to one because we're only getting one row of results and then here configure scraper you can play around with configuration to speed up slow down and optimize your scraper here okay so you can increase wait time at the moment i've got it to minimal because i found that to be quite effective now be wary when playing around with the configure scraper settings you can basically there's a fine line balance between going too fast and content not loading on the page before it scrapes or going too slow and waiting longer and the scrape taking longer so you have, it is a bit of trial and error until you find that sweet spot okay let's go to the next step here we used a pen step basically a pen joins one piece of data to, to the other it's really useful so what we do is append the the, the the read from the google sheet so we take that the url of the product the asin etc and then we append it with the data that we've just scraped and we stick it all together so that we get as we see in this preview we get a nice um a nice join of all the content that we can write to the google sheet here and this step just writes we've got the appended data importantly attached there then we have add to existing so the data is always added so it doesn't overwrite next up we delete a row from the google sheet why on earth are we doing this you may ask yourself well we're doing that because basically we read the first row we do our automation we delete that row then we read a new row and that's how we loop and that loop is triggered by the final step here the jump step where we jump back to one to read a new step and here we can set the amount of cycles so it's incredibly simple axiom to set up you can build this from scratch in a few minutes <coughs> just replicate all the steps if you're building from scratch and fo follow the configuration that i've just talked about you can of course customize it with other actions if you want you can click on buttons before you scrape whatever you need to do you've got complete control and freedom to customize and develop the um, automations you want awesome 
And now finally, a little bit of troubleshooting. So what things can go wrong with an Amazon scrape? So I've touched on a few of them. Basically there can be issues with selectors. So sometimes selectors are empty purely because a bit of content that is on one page won't be on another. So you could have an, a, a product that's got no ratings. So that ratings would be missing, for example, or it's got some sort of special offer active and that's not present on another page. So content being present and content missing is always an issue. It can cause the varying load times because that selector is looking for that bit of content, is waiting for it to load and it doesn't appear. It can also, if you don't have this setting on, it can just stop your bot, which I've got by default set on, continue on error. So that basically means if there's an error, the automation won't stop. It will continue to run. Oh, cool, pardon me. Um, next up, what other type of issues? So if you find your bot is just for some reason looping through the same page, you've either triggered the loop accidentally here and need to turn it off or you're not deleting the page. So you can just check that. You're deleting, not the page, I mean the row. So check you're deleting the row and check this loop hasn't become active here. And then finally, a little bit about speed, about the speed of the scraper because um, here configure scraper play around with the settings here if it's going too fast add some wait time the scrolling basically the wait time between scrolls is maybe a bit more important if you're scrolling data from deeper in the page you may want to add a second back number of attempts you may want to increase if you're waiting for data to load on the page and minimum weights between scraping usually the default is five seconds here two here and nothing set here. So that's the standard axiom default. So feel free to try that. Now, the other way to speed up the axiom is to make sure you've got maximum results set to, to one. And then in your selector tool, do trim, trim the fat. Don't just leave selectors in here for, if you don't need content selected, remove, remove it and just take the content that you want. It'll just speed up, speed up the bot run. Cool. Awesome. Hopefully you find that helpful. Hope you enjoyed automating with Axiom. Thank you for giving it a try. I'm Alex, co-founder of Axiom. Goodbye.